I need to stand like here? Good? Alright. I like it, yeah, I can't see you down there. Just watch my feet. Watch my feet. Um, my contribution tonight is going to start off as a bit of a serious rant and then move into funny things. Hopefully you'll notice when that transition happens, otherwise we're in trouble. I should start by putting it right out there, I'm against gay marriage. I don't want it. I don't want straight marriage either. In fact, I don't want marriage full stop. I don't, thank you, I agree. I don't see why we should be hanging on to this antiquated relic that still reeks of misogyny and bigotry. Why we'd want to buy into an institution that was established so that men could legally own women. It gives kind of a whole new meaning to the leaning across the bar and saying, I'm gonna own your ass tonight, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not gonna judge you if you really, really, really want to have one of these ownership ceremonies, but we should call a spade a spade. It is an ownership ceremony. And I'd really like you to be honest about why you want it. To paraphrase uh, Catherine Devney, just once I'd like you to say, I want to get married because I'm needy, insecure, deeply conservative, and have abandonment issues. <laughs> Seriously, at the crux of it, marriage is about recognising some relationships as legitimate and others as less so. On one side of that debate is the nuclear family. We've got two monogamous people, children, maybe a dog, white picket fence if you're an overachiever. And on the other side is everyone doing everything else. Ma marriage is like this massive apparatus set up to coerce and cajole and fool us all into thinking that the nuclear family is the natural and preferred state of being. So I'm concerned that the only thing gay marriage would do is create a bunch of queers who are a little more acceptable than all the other queers by virtue of their relationship choices or their sexual habits. If we're holding up shiny, happy, wholesome gay marriage as the final proof that we've made it and we're acceptable, where does that leave all the other queers who aren't married? Where does that leave the single queers? Where does that leave queers who engage in sex work or those who are in open or poly relationships? I struggle to see how segmenting of a group of queers as being more acceptable furthers the cause of equality. And I don't see what it has to do with our underlying principle that we've always based our campaigns on, which is the sexual conduct between two consenting adults shouldn't be any basis for discrimination. Now I know you're thinking, that's great, Mr. Revolutionary, but we're not going to abolish marriage any time this decade. And you're probably right. And you're probably saying, well, as long as marriage exists, we want in on that. And that's fair enough. But I suspect we're looking at this in the wrong way. I think we need to stop being so negative and looking at on all the things that we don't get to do. Stop and think for a moment about the benefits we get from being barred from being married. How many times have you heard stories of straight people feeling really pressured by their beloved other or their parents or their beloved other's parents to make an honest man or woman out of their partner? Do you know how many of them would give their right arm to be able to turn and say, hand on their heart, baby, I love you, I really do, I really wish I could, but we'd be breaking the law. <laughs> we have that freedom. The other thing that we have, particularly if you're a gay male couple, is disposable income. Many people have quite a bit of disposable income. Why is that? Because we don't have to pay for weddings. <laughs> I was looking at some stats that uh, came out on the 17th of February, so they're quite recent, and they said that the average cost for a wedding in Australia at the moment is $50,000. 50, I know, $50,000. And that's the average, of course, for straight weddings, and we know they don't know how to throw a party anyway. So could you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine how much it would cost if we start getting married? <laughs> There'd be all the pre-wedding prep, you know, the, getting the gym membership, the suntan, the waxing, unless you're there and then no waxing, but still. Then there'd be the on the day costs, the truckloads of glitter, the mirror balls, paying for Lady Gaga's appearance fee. And that's even before you take 200 of your strictly closest friends on a cruise around the Mediterranean into the Greek Isles. How's that disposable income looking? Very disappointing. That, of course, though, would only be the start of it. As we know, first comes kissing, then comes marriage, and then comes babies in the baby carriage. And baby carriages are quite expensive. Not only that, but babies grow up, and then they want to get married. And the same research report I was looking at said that the cost of weddings is increasing by about 25% every couple of years, 
So it means by the time your children want to get married, you're looking at about $200,000 per child, per wedding. Probably need to start saving now. That disposable income is all gone. And look, they're just two of the risks associated with marriage. There's many more, but I can't speak all night because these people want to speak too. But it's a reason why I think we need to look out for our queer youth. I'm very worried about the youth of today. I think, yes. We all worry, don't we? It's something that happens as you get older. Um, once upon a time, our queer youth were you know, painting banners and putting t-shirts on and wearing badges and marching in the streets, demanding the legal right to fuck whoever they wanted, whenever they wanted. This was age-appropriate behaviour. Young people are going through puberty, they've got all those hormones in their body, they're supposed to be obsessed with sex, they're supposed to be out there sowing their wild oats and being promiscuous and stuff. But the youth of today, have you seen what they're doing? They're doing their t-shirts and banners and stuff, and they're parading in the streets demanding the legal right to have sex with one person for the rest of their life. And even then they're probably being ambitious based on what I've heard about marriage. <laughs> I suspect their promiscuous forebears are turning in their graves. And I'm worried about what this is going to mean for their development and, and their overall worldview. I mean, if they're obsessed not with sex but marriage now, what happens to the youth that comes after them? Are they going to be campaigning for celibacy? <laughs> it's very sad. So for the sake of the youth, we need to get back to our roots. By our roots, I mean all of our roots, many of them frequently. Not this rooting one person if you're lucky for the rest of your life until death does your part. And I know now you're thinking, well, now you're just getting old and intolerant and, you know, you've got to let young people experiment. No harm can be done. Unfortunately, that's not true. I've done some very rigorous research, the findings of which I'd like to share with you tonight. If I could have my assistant. Make sure you hold it up the right way. Yeah, that's right. Yes, good, good. Now, I appreciate not all of you will be able to see this well, so I'll talk you through it. It's a graph showing the relationship between the number of gay bars in Perth and the extent of gay equality along the bottom, or as I like to call it, the weird just like you index. You'll see that as we become more just like you, with marriage probably being right down the end, the number of gay bars in Perth decreases. <laughs> no, it's true. And you might be thinking, well, that's a little bit shallow, and I accept that, but if we could turn to the next graph, Again, we have the weird just like you index along the bottom, and along the side we have the rate of global warming. You can see. You can see what's happening. Interestingly, the exact same graph applies. You could, re you could replace rate of global warming with incidents of terrorist attacks around the nation. It's true. Um, rate, rate of crime, teenage pregnancies, and a range of other social ills that are quite well. concerning. Finally, the last graph, please. Now, this one is a little more complicated, but this shows the health of the world economy. You see, it's had its ups and downs, and it was difficult for me to chart all the downs and what was happening in terms of gay rights. But you'll notice the really big down. That's one that's every, in everyone's memory, the recent global financial crisis. Now, I don't know if you're an economics nerd, but some people say that that was precipitated by the collapse of the Lehman Brothers Bank in the US, and that happened in September 2009. Two days before that, the state of New Hampshire granted same-sex marriage. If one state in the US can do that to the world economy, <laughs> clearly, if we go in for this marriage thing and the combination of non-existent night nightlife, increased terrorist attacks, global warming, collapse of world economy, will spell the end of the world as we know it. It's a virtual Armageddon. Do you want to be responsible for that? I certainly don't. <laughs> 